Okay, so in my talk, I'm going to give a bit of a background on the Delamarian origin, uh, explain um, the rationale for why we want to work in this area, the questions that we want to, want to answer as part of our project, and a bit about what we're going to do. So it's still very early days for this project, so the results will have to start um, coming in next year. So the, the Delamarian origin is uh, part of a big orogenic system which formed along the eastern margin of, of Gondwana. Uh, so we call, in, in Australia, we call that, that portion of Australia the Tasmanides, and it's marked out really well by the thickness of the, well, depth to the lithosphere asthenosphere boundary, um, where we can see the transition from the thick Precambrian part of Australia to the thinner Phanerozoic lithosphere. Uh, and the, the Delamarian origin, which occurred in the Cambrian to the Ordovician, is the earliest element of the Tasmanides. So as this subduction as this system evolved towards the east, um, new orogenic belts were built, which are, include the Lachlan, the Thompson, and then the New England origin and others. Uh, so if we have a look at um, the preserved elements of the Delamarian origin, which is as well as, so uh, in South Australia, it occurs along the, our eastern margin, then extending into New South Wales, well, western New South Wales, Victoria, and parts of Tasmania. So the red outline is the Delamarian origin, uh, the colour polygons are the, the outcropping geology. So in the, east, in the western part of the Delamarian origin, we've got the rocks we know in the Adelaide Fold Belt cropping out in the Flinders and Mount Lofty Ranges. Um, and the Stansbury Basin came in two troughs. So, th so these are the, the sediments that were inverted um, and thrust back onto the continental margin. We've got the granites in the Pathway Ridge. Uh, and then in Victoria, we've got the Glenelg River <coughs> Glenelg River Complex, which is equivalent to what we see uh, in the high-grade part of the Kanmantu Trough. Uh, then if we step across to the eastern part of the origin, this is where the volcanic arcs are preserved. Uh, so in the Coonanbury Belt in um, New South Wales, there's a Mount Wright arc, which has volcanic arc and four arc su successions. Um, and that arc... Well, it, similar rocks occur in the Lot Lily Cars Belt undercover. And you might notice from the magnetic image that it looks like uh, the trend of those rocks could extend into South Australia. Uh, Mount Staveley Volcanic Complex in Victoria, which was recently drilled as part of um, DTCRC. And then there's also volcanic arc successions in Tasmania, the Mount Reed Volcanics. Okay, so Victoria are five steps ahead of us in terms of um, the Delamarian and the, the Lachlan origins because they invested in a 500 kilometer seismic line um, across central Victoria and they've, they've used the information that that gave them about the crustal architecture of the system to develop uh, this model for the evolving origin. So if we start at 525, um, We've got an uh, oblique um, subduction margin, which is uh, evolving from the south to the north. Um, sort of, so this is just from a Victorian perspective. Uh, so I've got a juvenile volcanic arc, and they, they place South Australia in the backup position. So this would be the, the Kanmantu Trough, the Truro and Man River Volcanics. Uh, 510 to 505, the arc's evolving, it's becoming more mature, calcalkaline. Uh, the back arc is continuing to extend. We're still depositing rocks in the Kanmantu trough. Uh, and there's a microcontinent heading northwards, uh, which we'll keep an eye on, because at 505 to 503, uh, that, that microcontinent, which is... Um, part of Tasmania and the Selwyn block collides with the, um, with the subduction margin. 
Uh, and this and this is when the the Cayman two trough um, or the Adelaide fold belt becomes inverted. Uh, then 503 to 490, um, the, Mac the Macquarie arc uh, starts to initiate, Van Dee lands being drawn northwards, uh, and a big a sinistral transpression structure starts taking the strain, and there's a pulse of magmatism off the fertile mantle wedge. And this is the concept that Staveley Minerals tested at Thursday's Gossen. Now that's the Delamarian origin over, um, but in Victoria the action continues uh, down to four, at 4.35 to 4.15 uh, when Van, Van Dylan ends up in its final position with the Benambran orogeny. Okay. So we've got lots of ideas there that, that we can test in our program. Um, so our program's focused on the portion of the Delamarian between those arc systems identified in the east and the, um, and the, and the basins, uh, the inverted basins that we see crop out in the Mount Lofty ranges in the west. So the, the, missing, the missing piece of the Delamarian that we don't have too much information about. Okay, so um, obviously that part of the Delamarian is, sits beneath the Murray Basin and there's two talks to follow mine which are going to describe the Murray Basin in a bit more detail. Um, so there's not a lot of outcrop. Um, the map on the right shows basement intersecting drill holes from this part of the world uh, and the existing uh, exploration licenses. So up until now, um, there's been quite a lot of exploration and drilling on the far western part of the Murray Basin uh, with companies like Terraman and um, Hillgrove who are active at the moment, but no one's really ventured too far um, into the central, central part of South Australia's Murray Basin. Uh, so our objective is to understand the geology better, or just the basic geological framework so that we can know what mineral systems are perspective here and encourage people to explore. So the, the blue um, rectangle shows the section 15 which we've taken out over this region, just so that when we start releasing our results, everyone's on an even playing field. Now what do we know about the Murray Basin? So I just showed some of the drill holes that exist. Uh, so they intersect metacentry, metacentry, sedimentary rocks, which we don't know too much about. Um, lots of igneous rocks, so there's mafic and intermediate volcanics, volcanoclastic sediments, some felsic volcanics, a whole range of intrusives. Uh, the existing geochemical data suggests that these rocks come from a range of settings within the plate margin, including the continental rift, back arc, fore arc, and volcanic arc. So what, what we have might be bit more complicated than what's been uh, proposed from the Victorian perspective. There's also lots of sulphides. Um, so I wasn't looking for them, but in nine months I've seen more sulphides in rocks under the Murray Basin than I, than I did 13 years working in the Gula. Uh, so it's molly, pyrite veins, pyrite, chalk of pyrite. So there's, there's metals around and there's sulphides around. So these are the key questions we want to answer as part of our research. We just want to know what are the rocks under the basin, how are they distributed, and what's the setting? Uh, do we also have volcanic arc uh, rocks as well as back arcs? Because that's going to be very important for prospectivity. And how, do, how does the rock record relate to what's happening at the plate margin? Is all the deformation Delamarian, or do we also see the deformation events that are so important in Victoria for, um, for their mineral systems. Uh, you see some of the things we're considering are porphyry, orogenic gold, VMS, magmatic sulphides and ZXs. Uh, and do these mineralizing events relate to specific phases in the magmatism and the deformation? Okay, so the, 
The De our Delamarin project is part of Minix, and I see that they have a booth if you want to find more information. So our project work program is going to last for four years, so it includes GSSA uh, projects, projects from the other Minix researchers, and our drilling program. Um, and these are some of the people who are involved thus far. So here's a little bit about what we've been, been doing thus far. Uh, we're only about nine months in. So Liliana Stoyens and Mark Griffiths have been leading a, a review of the existing exploration data in our database and, and updating uh, what we have stored there. So adding in more drill holes, geochemistry, indexing records. And these two pie charts just show the amazing progress that Liliana has made in only a few months in adding in some of the, the open file data. Um, we've been logging um, cord holes which exist at Tonsley. So on the, the map, the, the black crosses are cord holes that exist. The green uh, circles are the ones that we've logged and sampled so far just to get basic geochemistry and geochronology data. And we've also begun a, a high logo scanning program. It's trying to get um, or data from the representative mineral deposits or, and, and the basic geology. Uh, the other major portion of our work program includes looking at the structure. So we're uh, so Tom Wise is revising the solid geology map. So the, the middle panel shows um, his early version of um, the solid geology in, in Turp around Carnarfon. Uh, we've, we've been doing, we've started some field mapping along select traverses. Um, we've already done the southeast region. We'll move on to Anabama and the Mount Lofty Ranges uh, later. So the idea is in interpreting the solid geology, we're trying to work out what the distribution of the rocks, their relationships, work out their structural history and kinematics. Um, we'll also be doing two MT profiles, um, which are stepping off of new models from Auslan, which combine uh, the data of the, the Delamarian and SA New South Wales and Victoria. Uh, and then extending from the work program we're doing, uh, this is a list of some of the researcher projects, uh, which would, should, some of which have already started, some of which would, should start next year. Um, so I said there's lots of sediments under the Murray Basin, but we've got no data on them. So um, there will be people looking at the provenance and the chemostratigraphy. Uh, there's obviously lots, lots of great mapping structural and metamorphic work done in the Adelaide, well, the Mount Lofty Ranges in the past, but we can expand on that with new, working at the pressure temperature conditions and constraining the timing of deformation, both at high and low temperatures, evolution of the magmatic rocks and their fertility, um, looking at the mineral deposits, so there's some very detailed studies of a few deposits, but we need to put them in the, the bigger regional context. Metal sources, um, wall forming processes. How uh, we've got a, an embedded researcher, Wei Hong, uh, who's working part, half at the Adelaide Uni, half at the survey, who's focusing on the porphyry potential um, and also some potential field inversions over the Anabama, Northern Murray Basin area. Okay. And the drilling program, um, which at this stage, we anticipate will happen in 2021 or 22. So the idea is uh, that all the programs I've just described will feed into um, helping us make a decision about um, the best places to, to drill to answer the questions that we have. And we'll be drilling within our Section 15 area, within an area that doesn't really contain many holes at, at the moment. Um, so we're looking to drill diamond core into the basement, but we may be using the CT rig. 
And once we've selected our, our drill targets in June of next year, we'll be releasing up um, some portions of the Section 15 where we won't be working. Hey, uh, for more, if you want more information, you can obviously come and talk to us, or there's a, an article in the latest Mesa Journal. I just wanted to also thank some people who have an interest in the Delamarian and have shared some of their ideas with me who aren't necessarily part of the project. Thank you.